Hi guys! I hope you're doing well today. Toby was grousing over there and had to say hi, little kitty. <laughs> um, I am in bed as you can see, but um, I've been staring at this plant for the last couple of weeks while I've been really ill and um, watching it slowly kind of fade um, and finally was able to get up and grab it here and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a quick video and show this because I bet this has happened to other people's before. I've had it happen before. I couldn't tell from my perch in my bed where whether it was actually a problem or not until I got up to look at it. But what I wanted to show you is this lovely little um, Hattiora. Um, it's also commonly called, let's see, what are the common names? Drunkard's Dream, Dancing Bones, I think, you know, several names like that. And it usually lives, um, you can see here in my room, there's a, a southern facing window right there. And then we have all of this plant stuff. And usually it lives just right right about here, right kind of where this Thanksgiving cactus is sitting right now. And it's been there for a year, about in the same location. Usually I rotate my plants a little bit more, but it's been a little bit happy. Well, when I repotted it, um, I think I did a video on repotting this guy a while back. I thought, you know what? You could probably use a little bit more light because our winter has been so cloudy this year and plants that are in southern facing windows are really stretching out even um, that don't usually. And so I thought, I'm just gonna poke him since it's been so cloudy, I'm gonna poke him in the window. And this side looks fairly good, as you can see. It's fairly green, um, but you can see some of the little yellowing, um, just certain segments that are yellowing all around here. And I thought, oh, I must have overwatered it, but then I thought I didn't even water it when I repotted it, so that's a little odd. So I just was kind of seeing this develop. Well, we'll look at the other side of the plant and you'll see uh, a bit more drastic, which it's, oh, let me show you before I talk about it. <laughs> Ta-da! Can you see how, like, this is actually more of a purple color, but if you see it from far away, it definitely looks brown. You can see all this, see all this dark purple as compared to, um, what do we do on the top here, the green on the other side. Now, what happened with this guy? Well, actually, it's kind of a, it's fun to make videos like this because it's a problem that's not really a problem. This is the side that was towards the window, that was facing the window, and this is the side that was away from the window. And because these guys are epiphytes and grow in trees, they like more shady um, environments. Now, this is northern Idaho. We don't have super, super strong sun, especially not this time of year. It's the beginning of April. And so this, that can kind of give you an idea of how sensitive they can be. It's also a little dehydrated because I didn't water it after repotting because some of, a few of these leaf segments were turning yellow and I w just wanted to make sure it hadn't been overwatered and wasn't um, getting any rot or whatever. But now I know it's just from too much light, um, which I've had them do this before. I just wasn't able to get up and actually inspect it. I was looking at it from far away and thinking, uh-oh, I hope that's not overwatered. But this is super common with epiphytes when they get too much light. This is very, very much what they look like. And um, the Slumbergia, the Thanksgiving cactus, Easter cactus, a lot of the Ripsalis, um, varieties they get this purple brown color if they get too much light and within pulling them out of the bright light usually with a good water they will green up within just a few days um, but sometimes it takes a couple of weeks it depends but it's much 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 better than overwatering or having rot or something but it can look pretty startling when you think oh I'll give my plant a little bit more light and then it starts freaking out. And when you take a picture, like if I were to just take a photo of this, especially up close, a lot of these yellow segments on the end, depending on where I took it of the plant, like here, um, a lot of people could think this was overwatering um, just from a photo because a lot of times these yellow, um, these segments turn yellow really fast and when they're overwatered, and um, usually from the ends and kind of go down. Echeveria can do the same thing. Several other, lots of succulent species can do the same thing. But the difference is when they're overwatered, the segments are really fat and full, and um, 
and they get yellow and when you barely barely bump them especially with this species here but with most plants or succulents in general this is the this is the case if they're overwatered and they're turning yellow because they're overwatered they will detach really easily from the plant and I have had um, the Hattiora that are overwatered before and they yeah you if I did this you know all of these yellow ones would fall off if this was overwatered because they just get really but these are very very attached I mean almost ridiculously so I went to um, pull a couple off before I realized before I flipped the whole thing around and realized it was just the Sun that was causing a problem because I saw a few on this side and they were a little bit um, fatter and so I went to pull them off and it was like pull 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 and I was like I'm gonna end up tearing the whole plant and then I flipped it around and went okay it's just having a little too much Sun and wanting a drink um, but so when they're shriveled like this if they're turning yellow it's a lot of times the first signs of a bit too much light um, it can also be signs of not enough if it stays just this kind of pale, pale color. But in general, if your plants are going darker, that's too much sun. And if they're going lighter, that's not enough. And so if it starts, you know, kind of turning this color and then quickly progresses to a darker color, you can tell easier if it gets this color and just keeps going paler and paler and paler, almost to the point of being translucent most of the time, then that's lack of sun. So that's an easy kind of um, general rule that isn't always the case, but it is a pretty, pretty good, um, a pretty good rule is that darker means they're having a lot of light it doesn't necessarily mean too much even it just means they're stressed which a lot of these plants have periods naturally in their environment where they would be stressed you know um, they have different periods of the year where the Sun moves and then they get a bit more Sun and this would be normal even in their out um, in, even in their natural environment but in general they're in a shadier spot so for um, plants like this it doesn't really matter if they get a, a short-term um, over sun exposure as long as they're not burning um, now you can see this kind of scabbed area right in here sunburn can look like that and that you don't want which this isn't caused from sunburn this was just a, a little a little wound that scabbed over that it had but um, actual burn can cause you know huge scabbing and it can look really unsightly but sun stress just having your plants go dark worthia do this really easily um, it's not hard on them necessarily as long as it's not really really long term if I was like ooh, this looks purple that's nice I want to keep it like this all the time because I like having a purple that looks cool you know instead of green well, um, it's going to shorten the plant's life significantly, but it's not like it's going to kill them instantly. It's just that, you know, where this plant might live, you know, 10 years naturally, it might live three, you know, if you keep it in a stressed condition all the time. The same with um, too little light, the same with water propagation, uh, not propagation, sorry, water culture where you actually grow them in water. Um, it just shortens their life. It doesn't um, they'll grow quite well for a few years a lot of times, but then um, then they'll just die. They they don't have the longevity. It's kind of like um, feeding yourself Doritos um, just exclusively, you know? It's like, well, is that going to kill you? Well, not for a while, but yeah, eventually it's going to shorten your lifespan because you're not getting all of the nutrients um, that you need and your body is in a stressed state. And that's kind of how it is um, with these guys in in water culture in particular it's unless um, someone is being extremely exact on adding all of the potential nutrients and frankly we haven't even studied enough to know why plants grow in the dirt like there's so many reasons plants grow in the dirt <laughs> and we know many of them but there are so many more that we don't even realize even with like hydroponic gardening and stuff where they're very very um, on top of keeping certain nutrients there are so many um, substances in the soil and bacteria and good things that we don't even know how they all work together to help a plant have as much longevity as possible and so um, unless you're really keeping on top of it in water culture they're going to end up being deficient in something which generally doesn't kill them short term but often can kill them over a long period of time and just weaken them so then they are more susceptible to rot later on you know and um, people often say well it 
my I, I grow things in water culture all the time and they're very very healthy you know I've only you know once in a while they die of rot but that's 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 just a freak thing and it's like well it's kind of not and uh, they're not rotting because they're in water I agree with that because they've adjusted and, and acclimated to it but they are getting rot later in their life because they're more susceptible to it because the plant as a whole is weaker so anyways keeping them in a stress state for really really long periods of time isn't great but also some people hear stress and think oh no it means my plant is unhappy um, and that's not necessarily true either because a lot of times you know in the fall or the spring or something like that in their natural habitat when the sun gets stronger you know suddenly um, as the seasons are changing this is a pretty normal um, thing for the plant to do and to experience in its lifetime and it's it's designed to grow that way and it's designed to withstand you know short periods of stress just fine and for certain succulents even short periods of stress actually help them and um, cause them to do various and sundry things yeah I won't get into all that that'll be super um, get super long but um, release certain chemicals draw in more certain chemicals that actually help them long term and they're only triggered to do that when they're stressed and so there's certain things that certain reasons that it can actually be good um, to it's not it's not I don't view it as stress if it's something that they would experience um, every year naturally you know that they're used to but this is a stressed state so I'll just keep using that phrase because it make it makes sense but as long as it's short term it's not really um, bad but anyways I just wanted to show this let me get just a couple close-ups here so you can see how shriveled this is looking and there's no problem with the roots or anything like that this is a, a healthy guy it's just needing some water and um, to be away from the window so he's gonna go on back back over here to his happy little happy little home away from the bright Sun and he will perk up um, just fine. I'm also going to give this guy a dose of Epsom salts. So um, I mix up just a solution in water to give him a good dose of magnesium. Sometimes this yellowing tissue can be a magnesium deficiency and if your plant is deficient in something it um, gets stressed much easier. So um, considering it's just April and the sun really isn't that strong yet um, it being this stressed does surprise me a little bit and so since it started out as some of these just slightly yellowing I think it might be a little bit deficient in magnesium as well so and it's not gonna hurt him I haven't um, fertilized this guy in a long time and it's gonna be um, spring which it is technically spring here but we have a fair amount of cold weather still left and it was uh, it's been snowing the last two days um, even though it's April so <laughs> um, I usually would do this a little bit later I do generally give all of my succulents a um, boost with some magnesium in the beginning of the spring and um, one of the viewers commented and asked about me doing a video just showing how I wake everybody up for the spring and kind of what I use as a fertilizer and kind of my routine and um, so that's a great idea and I will try and do that it'll be a few weeks probably um, a because I'm not feeling well and B because it's just a little too early still I'm just seeing signs of everything starting to um, kind of wake up and come back to life so um, they're not quite ready for a big a big feeding yet but um, when they are I will do a little a little video and kind of just talk about what I do um, in the spring to give them a little a little boost for their most active period for most of the varieties now some of them will also be going to sleep about now and so that's that those they'll be treated differently of course but anyway um i think that's it i just wanted to show you guys this dress in case you've ever seen it um happen to one of yours or a different epiphyte you know a ripsala something like that and um just pull it back and give it a little bit of shade and possibly a little bit more water and it'll perk up I might if I think of it I'll do an update on this guy in a week or two um, and show how fast they can recover and yeah 
Anywho, alrighty. Um, if you would like to join the Facebook group, if you have a picture or a question that you'd like to ask that needs a picture with it, face uh, YouTube, sorry, doesn't really allow us to. I wish YouTube allowed us to post photos in the comments. That would be awesome, but. Um, that's all right. Uh, Facebook does. So if you would like to join that, you can poke um, poke a video or a, a well, yeah, a video would work too. A video or a photo um, in the group there if you have a question. And I don't always get to answer everything, especially if I'm not feeling well. But there's a lot of other people there that um, are happy to pitch in and help with their experience and um, research and knowledge, etc. And so it's a good place to um, ask or. Um, there is also Instagram where you can just tag me, share a photo and tag me in it and I will get notified. I don't check Instagram all the time, but I usually check it at least every week. And so, um, I will keep an eye out for that. A couple of people have tagged me recently, but quite a few people have asked, Hey, how do I post a video, uh, a photo to show this plant that I have a question about? And so those are a couple good ways to share photos. Um... Don't be offended if I if I can't get to everyone's questions though because uh, yeah it gets a little overwhelming at times when I'm not feeling well but it's no no offense to you I answer absolutely as many as I can um, as I am able so alrighty I hope you guys are having a fantastic day I will talk to you soon and happy growing.